Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome to part three of the Python Beginners course. In this tutorial, we take our first steps towards understanding if, else if, else statements. This is part three of the Python Beginners course. If you have missed any steps, by all means go back to the previous tutorials. But of course, this is very modular, so you can just drop into any of the modules on this course. You will find all the code that's presented in these tutorials in the GitHub repository, which you'll find in the in a link in the video description. The if statement is probably one of the most popular conditional statements in programming in general. It allows us to make logical comparisons between a value and what you expect. So an if statement can have two results, true or false. So let's put in place what I've just said in a more kind of visual way. Let's build an if statement. So imagine we had a name variable and we've typed in a name. Okay, so this is part of our application. Now what we wanted to do was we wanted to check to see if that name did equal what we expect. Now we're expecting this name to equal Xander. Now we know that's the case in this case because we've hard coded this into this variable here. So if, so now we need a condition. So if the name, remember this is the variable that's holding the word Xander, the string Xander, if that name is equal to, and then let's type in Xander for example. So like I said in the preview, the if statement allows us to make a comparison between the value, this is the value, and what we expect. So we expect it to um, equal, in this case, Xander. I'll explain more in a bit about these comparison operators, but let's just now recognize this means equal. So we're just comparing this, the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So does this variable hold the word Xander? So the outcome of this is going to be true or false, right? So we need a colon at the end here, and this is a block of code. So Python requires us to have some sort of space now to indicate that the code, this block of code continues on the next line here. So what we have now is two options, remember. So an if statement, the outcome will be true or false. Now, if the outcome of this is true, the code is going to continue below. So let's just print out the word true, for example. So we can now go ahead and let's just run this piece of code, see what the outcome is. The outcome is true, okay. So that's the word true. So this was evaluated to be true because the name does equal Xander. Now, if we were to change this, for example, and then go ahead, you can now see we don't actually output anything. So what's happened is that this has been evaluated to false. So therefore, the true part of the if statement here isn't executed by Python. The program just continues. So hopefully my initial statement or explanation of an if statement now makes a little bit more sense. An if statement allows us to make a logical comparison using comparison operators uh, between two values. So in this case, the value from this variable is Xander equals, using our comparison operator, the word or the string Xander. So the benefit of an if statement within our program is it allows our program to make decisions. Now, of course, this can then change the flow of our application and our application can then perform different tasks or different outcomes based upon the variables or the input that we give to our application. So let's just turn this into what we've been utilizing before in previous tutorials. Let's turn this into an input. Enter your name, for example. So let's give that a go. So if I type in Xander, Obviously that now, this statement here, will be evaluated to true and it should print out the word true. There we go. So now if I just type an input or if something random, we don't get an output. So it's important to understand some of the other basics here. So something I've kind of moved across very quickly was this idea of white space or indentation in the if block here. So Python is a unique language in that uh, for example, other languages, you'll see if statements have, for example, curly braces, something like this. 
So that's indicating that this is part of the if statement block of code here. Now Python doesn't utilize that. Python utilizes white space to indicate um, connectivity between previous code, for example, here. So here I've had to create an indentation and that's basically telling the Python interpreter that this code is kind of connected together. If I were to leave this um, on a new line and run it, you can see here we have an indentation error. Expected an indented block. Now this is pretty handy because it's very easy and clear to understand. It's on line four and we've got an indentation error. So that just tells us that our indents are incorrect. Now it might be um, that Later on, as our program develops further, we have multiple indentations and we just need to be careful that we're consistent with our indentations. If I highlight the, um, the white space here, you can see that there's two spaces that are being utilized here. So I need to make sure that I'm consistent with my indentation throughout my whole program and I'm using two spaces. Now, you don't have to use two spaces. The minimum is going to be one space. So I can just use a space here. Um, so I can run this, you can see it works okay. So the minimum is one space. Now down the bottom right hand corner here, you can see spaces, you can configure the spaces that you want to utilize uh, within Visual Studio Code. Now you can change it here or go to the file and settings and set it so it continues every time you open up Visual Studio Code. So now, for example, here when I press tab, you can see I'm now utilizing four spaces and not the two originally. So I tend to use four but two is good. As we move through this course, I will give you more information about white space, but let's just understand for now that we're using an if statement, we're gonna need some white space to print out uh, before we then sorry, execute the true statement. In this case, print true. Okay, so there might be some times, or there might be some occasions, for example, where you're just um, spanning out your application and you haven't um, gone into the actual if statement yet, for example. Um, you, you haven't sorted out that logic yet. Uh, so what we have here is the opportunity to introduce pass. So this just tells the Python interpreter that um, we just want to move on. So the problem being is that if, for example, we had an if statement with no true value let me just close that. With, without actually entering the, the true statement here, what will happen is it will cause an, a problem, an indentation error. So we include, or we can utilize the word pass. So in Python programming, the pass statement is a null statement. The difference between, for example, comments and a pass statement is that Python is, uh, Python interpreter ignores a comment entirely. That's what we learned from a previous tutorial. However, pass is not ignored. So pass is executed by the interpreter, but the result is no operation. So let's just think of it as a placeholder um, for code that we want to enter later in our program. So let's move on now and talk a little bit more about comparison operators. So we've got these two equals um, that represents uh, both, both conditions must be met or, or equal. Um, so here, for example, we've been utilizing strings so far, but we can use integers. So does one equal one? Yep. Uh, does two equal one? Well, no, because only one equals one. Okay, so equals, both conditions must be met. So we'll go for an example with the some of these popular comparison operators here. So we've seen the double equal, so not equal, exclamation mark equal, not equal to, or either condition must be met. Okay, so greater than, so we've got the right chevron for greater than and left for less than. So for example, one is greater than zero, that's true. Uh, 100 is greater than 10 and less than, so one is less than two. So in addition to that, we also have greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. So that gives us an opportunity, for example, where we have uh, 10 is greater than or equal to 10. Well, that's true because it's equal to. So it's um, either either, so greater or equal to or less than or equal to. So it's well worth making a note here of those 
and then just uh, learning them um, as you go on uh, because these type of conditions here these are kind of your tools to create your application you're going to utilize this to perform or to create comparisons in your program in order to perform certain actions and the more the more you understand and the better you are able to remember and understand these comparison operators uh, the quicker it is you're able to write code and to perform the right actions that your program needs in order to perform the tasks that your application needs to perform so let's just go through some examples uh, we're just going to try and print true on all the examples for now okay so one is equal to one hopefully we understand this so the left and the right have to be the same or generally the same okay so one equals one or as we've seen earlier we can use a string so we can match strings okay so not equal to so one is not equal to zero it's equal to one of course but it's not equal to zero so let's run this now I'm just going to get rid of the, the input okay control and C to break our application okay so that's true one is not equal to one okay so one is not equal to one well that's false because one is equal to one so therefore this is returning false so therefore we're, we're printing out nothing at all okay so not equal to so one is not equal to one right so next up is more than so one is more than zero so this will be true so one is less than two for example so this is going to return or print true okay so then we had the others <clears throat> so less than or equal to so this gives us an opportunity to run this so less than or equal to well that's still going to be printing out true and of course if we now have one because one is equal to one part of this is true so let's go for true there we go and then we've got the other way as well so one is more than or equal to zero that is obviously true and then one so we still got the equal component here so this will still be true too so we've already seen in an example that we can utilize uh, variables um, as well as just uh, entering the values in the if statement typically we're probably going to grab the values from a variable so just x and y just to give you a simple example x and y so we can replace this with just with x and y and then perform the statement um, and evaluate the expression as per normal there we go so I've gone through each of those comparison operators and it's well worth just going through the flow this may seem a little bit simple for some of you possibly but it's well worth just going through the steps writing this out and just familiarizing yourself as much as possible utilizing some simple examples these comparison operators in the first tutorial I introduced data types so far in this course we've been utilizing strings integers and floats so I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce boolean type so I've already explained or been giving you a general idea of what boolean might be because I've been saying true and false so a boolean is true or false so to give it more of a formal definition here in programming a boolean or bool is a data type with two possible values true or false so like assigning integers or strings or floats that we've been doing so far we can assign a value or a variable to a boolean and that's true or false so we can assign true or false to a variable now we don't need double quotes here if we did that would turn into a string of course so this is a boolean value true or false so we can go ahead and print that out so let's do that so here for example let's just try this oh sorry x there we go 
So again, this is not a string, so we don't need to kind of convert that into a string like we've done previously with other values. We can print it out. However, what's worth noting is the Boolean can also represent one and zero. So if we were to cast true, the Boolean value true, and if we were to cast the Boolean value false, and let's go ahead and just print this out. What will get printed out now is the value one and zero. So at this point, it might seem a little bit abstract to think about true or false, or you might be asking yourself, well, how would I even utilize this in a program? Don't worry about that for now. Let's just understand there's a data type called Boolean, true and false, and they can also represent the value one, true, false, zero. Now, what's also interesting is we've seen previously how we can, for example, uh, calculate here. This can be evaluated by Python, and obviously the output here is two. So if we were to use some other operators, for example, we've seen less than. So what would be the outcome now? So this would get evaluated, and the outcome of this would be a Boolean. False. And then, of course, um, we could use a comparison operator, true. And we can also have greater than. False. So here then we've been the the expression here has been evaluated to a boolean true or false so at this point it starts to feed into that question that you may have had well when would we utilize uh, a boolean for example so imagine this being part of your application that you're trying to um, determine whether something is true or false so we could use the outcome of this to then perform a certain operation. So based upon whether the outcome is true or false, we then perform those certain operations. And I guess that in some respects is what we're describing as an if statement. But if we were to, for example, um, have an in, sorry, have a, have a variable here, let's uh, see this. So we're now outputting um, a boolean. Now we could utilize this, of course, in an if statement. So if uh, z, for example, so just if z, and let's go for print. True. Okay, so let's just uh, try this. So what's happening here then? So let's remember that this statement here is being evaluated to true or false. So the outcome of this will be true or false. So what we're doing now is we're utilizing a Boolean um, in, or we're utilizing a Boolean in our system to cr create decisions. So we know that one is not greater than one, so this should be false. So if Z, so remember this should be evaluated to true or false. So and at the moment, this is gonna be false. So nothing is going to be running here, or the print isn't going to be printed out. So if we were to change this to zero, so now this should return true here. So what's stored in this variable is true. So if true, so this is going to get evaluated to true because Z is true, then we should now output true. So this starts to feed in, although very complicated at this point, maybe, this starts to feed in the idea of how we're going to start to utilize or how we might want to utilize Booleans in our application. So the fact is that we can evaluate any value and give true or false or return true or false. So let's just show you an example of that. So let's just go for a print and then um, let's just convert. So similar to what we've done previously with an integer, um, where we casted an integer, um, we can also cast a boolean. So let's just go for, for example, hello world. So what would be the outcome of this? So the outcome of this is true. So at this point, it could be hard to understand or explain why is it outputting true. So let's just consider this as something. So we're trying to cast it to a boolean. Um, is it true or false? Well, there's something there. So it's true. Something exists. 
So we could just look at it this way, although not necessarily correct, something is true um, if there is something actually entered here in a string. So let's just um, return nothing, see what happens. It's false, because there's nothing there. So we could just look at it that way in terms of strings for now, the fact that um, Boolean is being cast based upon whether there is a string present or not. Now let's remember that the Boolean um, true uh, returns one or can be represented as one. So let's just cast a, an integer one. So the outcome of this would be true because um, a Boolean true is one. And of course, a Boolean false would be zero. So when we try and cast a Boolean zero, the outcome of this is false. So we're probably going to find that any positive number is going to return true. But however, a zero value would represent false. So the question again is, when would I use that? Well, for example, imagine you were, um, <clears throat> imagine you were trying to capture user's input. Imagine the user didn't type anything at all. Well, if the user didn't type anything at all, then there's no string. So what we could do is we could evaluate that to a Boolean. And then, for example, we could run a, a, an if statement. So if the Boolean equals false, then we're going to say to the user, actually, you haven't typed anything in, for example. So it does have its merits and its values within our program. And as we explore Python further, we start to utilize this, this idea of a Boolean in our applications. Right, so just to recap at this point, the if statement, the if conditional statement. So far, we understand that we need an if, the word if, and then a condition of some sort. Now, of course, I've introduced you to comparison operators, so we understand a little bit about that now. And we know that the outcome of this will be a true or false. So true being an outcome. If true is an outcome of the condition, then the print um, statement or print command is run. Now, if, for example, the condition evaluates to false, then the program will just continue at this point. Now, this condition so far, I've presented the idea of we have a condition like this. So one equals one. So that then will be evaluated to true. Therefore, we're going to print out this statement here. OK, true. OK, so what we have now is the opportunity to think a little bit um, wider, or we have the opportunity now to think about utilizing some more logical operators, sorry, to expand this, because it might not just be this statement we want to evaluate. We might want to evaluate multiple statements within our if statement. So imagine, for example, um, we took in a number. So we took in a number x and we allow the user to type in a number. OK, so now we want to run an if statement. So if x is equal to 1, we're going to do this. However, we also want to make sure that our program uh, or we want this if statement to be true also if, for example, the user types in 1 or 100. So what we can do now is we can utilize logical operators, and we have two. And those are AND and OR. So let's uh, type in AND. So if x is equal to 1 and, well, in actual fact, we want to use OR this time, or x is equal to 100. OK, so here I've got two statements, um, two uh, parts that are going to be evaluated. So if x is equal 1, if that's true, we're going to run this print statement. or so it's going to read across, or x is equal to 0. So if this returns false, is evaluated to false, it's going to look for the next one. If x is equal to 100, what is, that's true. And therefore, we're now going to print out the true. So we can expand this with more. So or x is, we can just go on forever, x, x is equal to 1,000, and so on. So we can have multiple, um, we can evaluate multiple expressions here. So that's or. Um, how about and? So the second logical operator here, introducing to you, that I'm introducing to you is and. Okay, so uh, let's just think of a, a simple and. So imagine we had um, x and y. 
y is the name so let's uh, go for the name and then the x is the age for example okay so here what we want to do is we want to check to make sure the an age age and the name is true before we print out something right so if x is equal to 20 and so we just use the english word and uh, then y is okay i haven't done the double equals there and y is equal to uh, xander then as long as both of these conditions are true it's going to print out the print statement here okay so um, as long as they're both true so and both need to be true so we can probably continue and one is equal to one for example so let's print that out and there we go so it's true because all of these here will be evaluated to true so hopefully that makes sense hopefully i don't need to give you any more examples there we will utilize these in examples but there we have and and or and it allows us to combine conditional statements so far we've been utilizing the if statements now we can extend this in two ways and i'm going to show you two examples or we're looking at two methods to extend this if statement so in this case or well, next up we're going to be talking about else so far we've been using if condition and that's the true block however we might want to run code if the condition is evaluated to false so we may want to run a different block of code so else allows us to perform that action so let's just see this in in action so if one is equal to two which is false uh, let's just do a simple print here uh, so i'm going to print true there and then down here the false block is print false okay so if one is equal to two um, if that's true it's going to print this if it's false now we're using else it's going to print this here so let's run that and now we're running false so if i remove that and change it to one now it's true now it's going to print the true there we go okay so if else so it just allows us to expand our if statement to include a different component utilizing else that allows us to control further what happens when this initial statement uh, is evaluated to false so you might be wondering well what's the point of that because i could just do something like this for example well the problem with this is that regardless whether this is true or false is evaluated true or false this is going to get printed now we only want to get that printed false if this condition returns or is evaluated to false so that's why we're going to use an else and not just a continue the program and print something out so i want to get you involved here in this simple problem i say simple apologize in this problem here we have two variables age and required age so imagine we can't enter unless we are 18 or over so what i'd like you to do now is think about how you could build an if else statement if the user or if the um the age of the person typing in their age is 18 or over then we're going to allow them or they're going to be legible for the course now if the user types in a number less than 18 what we're going to do is we're going to tell them how many more years um, before they can then take the course so you need to work out a way of um, determining from the number that they've inputted how many more years they need to wait so for example if someone types in 16 it should return sorry you have two more years before you can start the course because you need to be 18 to actually um, go on to the course okay so you can pause um, and have a go but i'm now going to tell you or go through the solution here All right so if the age is greater than remember or equal to 18 remember it's 18 or um, over so if the age is equal to that so we've got the age that's what the type user types in and the required age is 18 so if the age the user types in is greater than or equal to the required age 
then we're just going to print something like uh, you can start the course for example now right so of course if the user age is not greater than or equal to the required age of 18 then we are going to need to run some more code so we're going to run the else this time so let's create um, a new variable here called years to go or uh, yeah years to go for example right so what we're going to do here is we're going to work out how many more years the user so if they type in their age of 16 we know that they need to wait another two years so let's go for our required age and then age so here we've utilized the modulus so it divides the left hand operand so the required age and it divides the left hand operand by the right hand operand yeah and returns the remainder okay that's the important so we're going to get the remainder so if we type in 16 the remainder um, would be 2 so now we can go ahead um, apologies I've got the semicolon there so now we can go ahead and print something um, print uh, sorry let's uh, use f string sorry you have and then bracket uh, years to go you have two years to go or how many years to go um, have two more years to wait for example right so let's give this a go so enter the age 16 sorry you have two more years to wait okay so let's type in 10 you've got eight more years to wait and so on so if we type in uh, 18 or over then you can start the course now so i hope that gives you a nice introduction to if else statements now of course it's probably worth practicing this so go ahead and maybe just think of some other scenarios or simple tasks that you you want to um, try and just familiarize yourself because there's a lot there going on with the if else statements in addition to that you've got the comparison operators so have a go and then we can move on to the next component right so next up then there might be occasions where we would extend so we've seen previously i've mentioned the logical operators which allows us to combine conditional statements so we might have an and here for example or an or so it might not always be possible for our application to fit into that type of way of working so what we have is a if else if so we can run multiple if conditions if you like so for example if the age is greater than or equal to the required age 18 in this case um, you can start the course now but what happens if for example and i'm not trying to be ageist here so what happens if for example we don't want to allow the person to join the course if they're over 60 for example so how will we do that um well we couldn't use and and or here so we would need to have some sort of other condition so this is where the else if um, comes into play so else if elif and then here we can now set up an additional uh, conditional statement so let's say now that the age if the age is greater than or equal to and in this case we're just going to hard code this 60 this integer so if the user enters the age of 60 or over well, we're going to say something else so let's give this person some discount if they're over 60 let's just say you um you are you are eligible eligible for discount discount on courses okay so we don't need that semicolon on there i do apologize uh no sorry there what am i doing okay okay right so 
if else if age is greater than 60 print you are eligible for discount on courses so this allows us you can see to, for us to capture uh, different numbers in this case so maybe what we want to expand this again and maybe now we can for example have special offers so if the age is equal to for example a special day where 30 year olds um, you are eligible now for half price courses half price courses so we can continue with help is help if else if we want to throughout our program and maybe uh, create some more additional conditions for our application so let's give this a go all uh, right so let's enter below 18 again so 10 so you've got eight more years to wait okay i've got a space error there okay so let's now try 60. so now you can see we've captured that you can start the course now um, so that didn't capture did it so if age is um, greater equal or greater than required it says print you can now start the course now notice what's happened here is that we've typed in 60 now we were maybe expecting us to print you are eligible for discount but what's happened is we printed you can start the course now so this is interesting so how could we overcome some like this for example so clearly what's happening here so clearly what's happening here is that our application is moving through this it's checking the age which is 60 required age yep this condition is now true so what's happening is we're printing out this and now once we've done that our application stops it's performed its task of um, creating or it's performed its task of performing this condition and returning true so there's no need in its um, opinion to then go ahead and do anything else so we can resolve this problem in two ways first of all we could work more logically in that we need to think about capturing the conditions in a more incremental way so for example let's first of all try and capture the age being above 60 because we know that this program if the user is above 60 we're going to print out something different which is uh, you are eligible for discount on the course okay so let's go ahead now and run this so age is 60 and now you can see it's capturing this first because they are over 60 or equal to 60 so we're printing you are eligible for discount on the courses so let's go ahead now and just type in for example 20. so now we are capturing this because it's it's moving through this one by one so python is looking at this condition first true or false if it's false then we're going to move on to the elf if this is important to understand which i haven't really conveyed to you so if this condition is false then we're going to move to this condition if this is false we're going to move to this if at any point python finds a true condition it's going to run whatever we've asked it to do and then it's going to stop that's important to understand so 60 great so we put it into logical order so that will now work so let's go um and notice that we've got age equals 30 now here this is going to be captured and run true so what we also need to do is to move this above put this down here so now what we're doing our program is capturing first check to see if they're over 60 then they're going to check to see if their age is 30 and then we're just going to go for any other age above 18. so that's how the program is going to be run now so this is a, a more logical order um, a more structured order that should work now so if I type in 30 we can now says you can access the course which is this here so I just need to move that back down here so we'll just run that again and there we go so you are eligible for half price courses so it's a logical flow now it might be that we don't want to work that way so let's just go back to the original solution uh, okay so what we can do in addition to this now let's just remember back to what we've already learned here we could utilize some logical operators because what we can now do is say age is greater or equal to age 
and or oh, sorry or the age is less than 60 for example okay so we can just extend this so both of these remember with the or must be true so now then when we type in 60 it will now say you can start uh, the course so let's just double check this so we're, we're trying to output um, you are eligible sorry we need and we need an and here not or so remember the or means that one of these statements must return true and this one was returning true at that point so let's try and so let's go do this again 60 and now you can see we're running you are legible for discount on this course so what's happening here obviously utilizing and both of these conditions must be true which they're not because the age is not less than 60 when you type in 60 so therefore we move on to the next component which is else if and the age is more or equal to 60 so we print out so we can also utilize you've seen there an example of logical operators in place to control the flow of our if else else statement so you might be thinking that's that's hard work this will slowly feed in and sink in if you haven't quite fully understand understood this it'd be well worth just rolling back the tutorial and just going through this task or just typing this task out and just going through that process again and reorganizing this if else statement because that's that's a real kind of point where you're going to start to learn more about controlling the flow um, of your application here utilizing if else if else statements and this is like i said a mainstay of your application so you're going to be utilizing if statements a lot in your application so let's now take you through the next step which is nested if statements so we've seen an example here of uh, an if else if else statement so let's convert this now and i'll introduce this idea of nested if so to give you a basic understand what i mean by nested if we can place an if statement within an if statement so for example here i can now add uh, an additional if statement so what i need to be careful of is i'm following the convention of white space here or indentation so here i'm using lighting utilizing four spaces so from the if statement i need to now utilize another four in order for me to connect if you like our code to this block so here i can now print for example hello world right so let's just run this code so yeah, let's run this code so just show this so for example type in 20 and you can now see i'm showing this print here and you can see it's showing hello world what's happening here is python is running through this condition it's returning true so we're running the print statement here and now it continues so now it's going to look at this statement this if conditional statement and it's going to then evaluate our statement here expression one is equal to one which is obviously true therefore we now go ahead and print hello world so that's a simple example of a, a nested if statement so the question now might be well when would i use that so let's try and think now of an example let's utilize this example here to convert this now utilizing conditional statements sorry nested statements here right so what we're going to do here is we're going to remove this else if here right so what's happening here then is if the age entered is more than 18 true yep and the age is less than 16 we're going to perform um, this true block here we're going to run this true block here okay so we're going to print um, you can start the course now now if the user age is 30 we're also going to give them some discount remember so we're now going to run this if statement so remember we're now kind of captured the user's age between 18 and uh, 59 that's what we've done here so let's go for if age is equal to 30 let's print um, you are eligible for discount okay so they have to be 30 so let's try that again enter age 20 nope enter age 30 yep 
so it now says you're eligible for discount on the course there we go so hopefully that started you thinking about if statements if else else statements and nested if statements so just to finish this off i just wanted to mention and i have already mentioned before in actual fact in this uh, tutorial or this course uh, sometimes there's opportunities for us to use i guess shorthand code or to compact our code into a smaller format and like i said as you go through learning python you'll learn these different ways of developing and writing code in a, a smaller factor or a smaller compact way now let me just uh, go through two simple examples uh, which might be considered kind of a shorthand of utilizing an if statement so um, so if for example x is greater than y print x is greater than y okay so notice here that this type of format i can use an if statement all on the same line so there's no need for me to kind of break and use the the white space i can just simply write an if statement all on one line now obviously i've not set up the variables here so let's just quickly do that if two is uh, greater than one uh, which it is then we're going to print so you can see that now says x is greater than y so we can perform the same type of logic um, utilizing elf else so uh, let's give that a go right so this time we're going to say print um, print x if a or oh, sorry um, x sorry is greater than y else print y so here we're using the if else so we start off with print x if x is greater than y so that's um the first i guess component of this else we're going to print y so let's go ahead and do that you can see now print an x now if i change the numbers so x is not greater than y so if this is false we're then going to print the else of y so now we have a basic understanding of these flow control statements or the if flow control statement if else if else let's now apply this to some code challenges so i've got four challenges for you we're going to start with number one which has two components so the first code challenge here is password matching so we need to create an application which will check the user password they enter to the password held in a variable so we need to write an output for both a failed and successful password match so we want the user to type in their password and then we're going to match it against a variable all right so let's have a look at the solution for this so we need to create a new variable let's call this x which is the password so obviously not safe and uh, now we want an input so let's use y variable to get the user to type in an input so enter your password okay all right so now we've got x and y so now we can create an if statement so if x is equal to y then we want to print um, a match was found for example um, uh, else we're going to print sorry a match wasn't found there we go so let's give this a go so enter your password so let's just enter something random sorry a match was not found and then let's enter the password correctly not safe a match was found so let's uh, have a look at this extension activity for challenge one so extending the password matching feature only users who correctly that enter who correctly enter the password and called by the name of xander should have access to the secret code so we need to extend the application to take in two inputs their password and their username and basically we're going to match them if they match true we're going to perform an action 
if they don't match, we're going to let them know they can't enter. So let's go ahead now and extend this. So let's go for Z uh, and input. So we're going to allow the users to input their, their name. Enter your username. So we know that um, the expected outcome, the expected outcome is Xander. That's what we're expecting uh, the username to be. So if X is equal to Y, that's um, the, actually, let's go for, if X is equal to Y, Apologies. Right, so let's go this name and let's go this Z username. So this is a, a good reason to name your variables. So if username equals Xander, yeah, okay. So if X equals Y, if the password equals what was entered. And let's now use and. So the username is equal to what they've typed in the username to be. So both need to be true a match was found else we're going to print a match wasn't found so let's give this a go so enter your password so not uh, not safe enter your username so that should be Xander sorry a match was not found let's just do that again so enter your password not safe enter your username okay let's type in Xander a match was found. So here you see the example. I wanted us a, a colon and a space, and that just makes it easy to understand. So let's just try something random. There we go. Sorry, a match was not found. Okay, so next up, code challenge two, coin levels. So we need to create an application so that the user can enter the number of coins they've acquired. Right, so we need an input so the users can type in the number of coins that they have. So based upon the amount of coins entered, the application would determine the user level. So here what we need to do is create an if statement whereby when the user types in their coins, depending on how many coins they type in, we then return a different value. So if a coins are equal to 0 to 20, that's bronze. So we're just going to return the word bronze. If the coins they entered is between 21 and 40, we're going to output silver. And gold, we're going to output um, 41 or over, we're going to output gold. Right, so let's give this a go. So we're going to need an input. So let's make a new variable for an input. Um, type amount of coins. Um, yeah, uh, amount of coins. There we go. So the user types in the amount of coins. So now we need an if statement. So if, if you remember the coins, if they equaled, um, if the coin if X is equal to, uh, or X is, sorry, uh, more than or equal to, if, if sorry, is more than, let's get this right. If X is more than zero, yep. Um, and is uh, also, Equal less than or equal to 20. We're going to print a bronze. Okay, so um, now we need x. Sorry. So if x is more than zero, now it can be equal to. Let's not forget that. So more than or equal to. So if x is more than or equal to zero, and if x is less than or equal to 20, we're going to print bronze. All right, so now we use the else is, else, else, if. Um, so if uh, x is, so this is going to be silver. So if x is greater than or equal to 21 and less than or equal to 40 in this case, we're going to print silver. Yep. Okay. So then we just finish off with, uh, we could just finish off with another else, else if. So if X now, gold is 41 and above. So if X is more than or equal to 41, then we're going to print gold.
Now we can use an else. So if a number is out of that range, so imagine they type in minus one, um, else, um, let's just print something. So, sorry, type in a correct number. There we go. So let's give this a go. So I've got a syntax error. Um, and sorry, X. There we go. So print. So undefined variable print. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. Right. So now then let's run this amount of coins minus 10 not supported okay so this is our first problem right so the input we need to cast potentially to an integer because that's what we're utilizing so let's go ahead and do that cool so now we're storing an integer in a variable so let's give that a go again minus one and it says sorry type of type in a sorry type in a correct number so minus one doesn't work. So let's go for 20. So we're expecting bronze. Yep, so equal to or less than 20 is bronze. So now it's just a case of looking at kind of the boundaries, silver. Yep, so 100 gold. Taking you back to the previous module, we created a very simple pizza slice calculator whereby we had a maximum of 12 slices. The user types in the amount of slices they've eaten. We then return the amount of slices that are left. Now, the problem with this application is that if the user types in more than 12 or less than zero slices, we are presented with a number which is not ideal. So for example, if the user types in 13, the outcome is minus one slices. So in this challenge, what I want you to do is try and take that program and utilize if statements to control the user's input. So the user should only be able to enter, well, the user can type in whatever they like, of course, but we want to be able to output to the user the fact they've typed in an incorrect value. So if they type in a minus one or more than 12, for example, then we should return an else saying that they haven't typed in a correct number. So this was the original code from the previous tutorial. 12 slices, input, how many slices have you eaten? Remaining equals the pizza slices minus the slices that have been eaten. And there we go. So let's just give this a go. 12, there's no slices left. But like I was suggesting that if we type in minus one, we've now got 13 slices all of a sudden. And if we type in 13 or 12 or more, we then have minus slices, which we obviously can't have. So let's convert this now into an if statement. So if, for example, the slices are less than or equal to, or just, I guess, less than zero, or if the slices are more than 12, then we need to do something. So let's just print, um, sorry, you entered the wrong amount. Okay. So <clears throat> that's a simple if statement for that. Else, what we need to do is we need to finish up. So let's just have the existing code. Let's just put that in place. Let's give this, well, let's give this a go. So minus one. Now, so sorry, you've entered the wrong amount. And then obviously more than 12, so 13. We now have sorry, you entered the wrong amount. So we should only be able to write the correct amount so 10 that gives us two so that takes you through the basics of if else if else statements to help control the flow of our application now at this point you might feel a little bit overwhelmed if you do do not fear there's a lot to learn here of course and most of this will just happen over time it may take you a few years to get very proficient at utilizing python in actual fact so just make sure that you continue practicing what we've learned here. Even if you just spend maybe 10 or 15 minutes each day just writing out code, um, that's all going to work towards your goal of achieving or learning Python and retaining the information. 
if and when you can, try and think of some other challenges where you might utilize if statements, just everyday type of things or applications that you might use. They're all utilizing probably control statements, if statements at some point. So try and replicate some of that information. So at the moment, we've only learned really the principles of variables, importing, inputting, sorry, simple data, but we've learned quite a lot, believe it or not, already. And you can already perform some interesting things with Python. So I do hope this was useful. Thank you very much for listening and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.